Hello, my name is Mar Fikes Jr. and welcome to Meticulous Basketball. Today we're going to be focusing on finishing school. Now this is something I've covered in the past, but this time around I want to get a little bit more in depth as it relates to finishing around the basket. So once we get done with this drill, you're going to have all the finishes that you need to be the modern day basketball player. Back in the day, um, you know, the game was a little bit different. You could get away with a basic layup and maybe an offhand layup and maybe a two-foot approach. But now, with the game becoming so much more athletic and so much more sophisticated in terms of defensive reads and with all the space that's available, it, it, it puts people going downhill, going to the basket in position to, uh, it, it makes it necessary for them to develop their footwork so they can optimize opportunities around the basket when there's space available. So now, we want to focus in on primarily the two-foot approach. We're going to go in one, two. All right, we're going to be take, working on that approach primarily. But we will focus in on some two-foot two approach, right? So let's bring it in. By the way, I got my son filming, so if he does something screwy, don't blame him. Don't blame me, blame him. All right, so a couple of things. When you're on the drive, when you're on the drive and you pick up that basketball, you get two steps. Back in the day when I was coming up, they used to always say a step and a half. And I think that step and a half was the step and dribble, and then you got one more, and that was your approach to the basket. Well, now they allow you to pick up the ball, and then you go one, two to finish. So because those are the rules, we want to take full advantage of the way that the referees call today's game, and not just on the NBA, but also on the college level and also um, on the grade school level. If you pound that basketball, you get two steps to figure it out, all right? Here's another thing. I want to provide content that helps everyone out. As I look at a lot of trainers on social media, a lot of those trainers offer what I call green light drills. If you got the green light, you can do this drill, right? So now we see guys teaching kids how to do this James Harden step back, and I've done it too, right? But I realized the only people who are getting the opportunity to shoot those shots are the guys with the green light, or the girls with the green light, or the ball players with the green light. If you don't have a green light for your basketball team, you probably can't shoot whatever shots you want, all right? So what I mean by that is if guys are teaching you all of these step back moves, the question is, are you able to do that in the game? Does your coach allow you to do that in the game? If your coach doesn't allow you to do step back moves and, and three and four dribble combination dribble moves in the game, then you may not want to pay too much attention to that content. You want to find the content that enables you to be a role player, enable you to be an efficient player off of one to three dribbles, maybe even operating without the ball and learning how to cut, screen, and do all those other things. Because even if coaches are running your play, you can still be highly effective and make yourself a player out there for your team. So we want to focus in, I'll focus on, on finishing school. We are going to start with some basic concepts and move on to and move on to some more sophisticated concepts. But at the end of the day, you don't have to be a green light player in order to do what we're going to work on. So what we're going to focus on is, well, we're going to start with some basic, basic, basic fundamental uh, layups or finishing school fundamental layups. So for a basic rule, if I want to finish with my right hand, I want to start my approach to the basket with my right foot. So if I want to finish right hand, I want to start my approach with my right foot. So even when you're attacking and you pick up the basketball, that first step is going to be a big indicator of which hand you would finish with if it were a fundamental layup. But you might jump off that right foot and finish with the opposite hand, but let's just keep it simple for right now. Right hand, right hand, right foot. Right hand, right foot, right hand, left hand. Over here, same thing. Left foot, left hand. Left, right, score. Also notice, I'm keeping the basketball above my shoulder. So when the little guys or when the guys want to reach in, hopefully they hit my body and I can continue finishing. So I'm here, one, two, and I'm scoring. Same thing. Even if I add the dribble, and we talked about when you pound the ball, you pick it up, that's when everything starts. So if I pound the ball, one, two, for my score. So that's the first layer of our fundamental layups. The second layer is going to be the inside finish. So now I'm cutting this defender off. I'm cutting this defender off. I'm going left foot, step, for a left hand finish. I want to cut this defender off and 
and use my inside hand to finish the bucket. Cut him off, score. Might have to be a finger roll or overhead finish or depending on how big you are or how skilled you are. Same thing, I want to keep the ball protected from this defender. Cut him off, score. Go again. This time I use that dribble, right? I'm going to use the dribble. And so the defender is on this side. So when I dribble, I want to dribble with my right hand, cut him off with my left foot. Left, right. Same thing on the other side. Cut him off. Finish. When I'm training in my sessions, I like to continue with that footwork and then work on the opposite hand finish. So now we'll go left foot, cut him off, jumping up. I was going to score with this hand, but they jumped, they, they stayed in the play. Now they're still on my body. So now what I'll do is I'll put the ball to my opposite hand and work on an off balance layup. Again, might have to go over the top or underneath, all depending on finger roll, all depending on how skilled you are. Show you again. Cut him off. Finish with the opposite hand. One more time. Cut him off. Finish. So now I got three finishes in, right? I got three finishes in. I got my conventional right hand layup. I got an inside layup, and I've already worked on an off-balance layup where I'm jumping off the wrong foot so I can score. Because you never know, sometimes you gotta get up there and you gotta figure it out. Let's now work on that two-foot finish. What I wanna do with this two-foot finish is I want to, again, cut my defender off with a huge step, inside step. I'm jumping off of that foot, landing on two for my finish. Let's look at it. No dribble at first, step. Land on two flush, bucket. Step, land on two flush, bucket. Now let's add the dribble in. With my dribble, it's gonna be step with the same foot. Step, bucket. Step, I'm under control, gather. Score. So again, now we talk about the two foot approach. That defender's on my hip. I want to cut him off and jump to the space, land on two, because if I jump on the, if I land on two, I can pivot and I can also score, right? So sometimes we like to use that jump stop to give us an option just in case the shot fake is available. And I can also, I, the shot is available, I can jump stop, shot fake. So if I go one, two, I gotta go up for the score now. Let's talk about coming to the middle. Also, these chairs are in position to mimic defenders and situations. So now, I wanna work on my cross, the paint score. So we just got done working on the straight line action. What happens when the opportunity starts from the right side of the floor and becomes available on the left side of the floor? Well, now I gotta work on my cross court footwork, right? Or cross the paint footwork. So we keep it simple. Left hand layup. Left, right, split the D, keep the ball high, score. Let's look at it. One, two. And you see, now you notice I'm using more of a hook finish because I can't use the normal finishes when I'm in a straight line. So now I gotta be able to score in a variety of ways and change up my shooting pocket. Same thing, right, left. See it again. Right, left, I mean left, right. Coming right back. Hey, try not to bring that basketball down. So now there's a few pickups. There's a few pickups we can use. When I was thinking about this video, I think I counted the four of them. There is, Obviously, the pound dribble to shoulder, pick up number one. I can pound dribble, get low, pick up number two. I can power, I can over dribble, pick up. So I can 
over dribble, pick up, and score. And I think I'm missing one more. Oh, I can cover up. I can dare throws, uh, halfback cover up. I can go to score. So let's work on all four, show them in drill, drill setting, and talk about the advantages and disadvantages. We've already talked about the pick up, but we'll do it anyway after bounce. So I'll pound it, one, two, score. You gotta have that as your foundation. I don't care how many different drills I give you, you gotta have that as your foundation. The second one you wanna have is, I like to think the, 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 the Derrick Rose cover up, but this is the thing, you gotta be good at going here to here. If you're not, if you don't have the ball handling skills to go from here to here, you're in trouble. But this is what it looks like. One, two, score. Pound it, one, two, score. Again, pound it hard, pick it up because these hands are active. Now let's talk about the high, the, 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 uh, high dribble and gather. Now, you use with, or over dribble and gather. A lot of times we use the over dribble, we are talking about it in a, when the hands are low, and you cross somebody this way, right? Well, we want to use that same concept, assuming that their hands are, or hands are low, and go over the top. The one way use this all the time. So we're going to pound it. One, two, score. Pound it. One, two, score. I got to pound this basketball. And as I put the ball over my head, because their hands are low, as I put this ball over, I want to catch a step at the same time, take my last step, and score. Come back further. One second. Let's do it one more time with the left. So that's another way in which we can work on our cross the paint finish with different pickups. And the last one is going to be a tough one because the back's going to bother me, but we're going to get after it anyway. Pound it, catch it low because you might have guys who want to reach. So we want to teach you. Hands are low. I'm getting the ball low. Coming up under. Hoping to get a foul for a score. Rip up. One more time. Rip up. Last four words. Last one. Rip up. Score. Almost done. So now that I went to the basket this way, there might be times when I go over crossover, and now I step this way because I'm cutting them off. Now I got to be able to score with my back to the basket. Let's look at it. This time I'm going to pound it, step with my inside foot, and I'm going to finish basically with my back to the basket. Let's look at it. Now, I may go here. The defender might be right there. They might take this away. So now, I got to have that available. Here we go. Hey. Just a quick little switch of the hands. And now, Got something to play with. One more time. Pound it. 
Last but not least, I call this the, the Kyrie series. Kyrie series. We're going to switch it to hands. You might be saying, well, Mar, if you just told me you were talking about fundamental drills that everybody can take advantage of, this seems like a green light type of concept. This seems like something, if you talk about Kyrie, Kyrie's got the green light, elite player, genius. Can my role players do this? They may need to. They may need, they may need to. A kid has a better chance of switching hands, going to the paint. That may happen more times, it may be more necessary to learn than step back threes and four or five dribble combinations. If we can get to the basket, then we wanna make sure that we got all the finishes available to take advantage of our drive. So this is why we put this in play. I like to keep it simple from starting off. I like to go with Statue of Liberty, right, left. I'm going Statue of Liberty, I wanna get stretched out, come here and then figure out how I'm gonna finish with my opposite hand. Let's look at it. Oh, finally missed one. Let's go again. Missed two. Let's go left to right. Show it. Finished it. Show it. Finish it. The reason why this is important is because I might go up. And next thing I know, Here's the leaper coming. Well, I gotta come up with something. I can't just let them bat it. I can't go up in the air and then in the air hit a guy. But what I can do is go up, switch hands, shield, and score. Let's look at it again. Show it. Finish. Show it, finish. So now that you have it, we got all of our straight line action. We got right, left, layup. We got left, right. I'm sorry, yeah. We have left, right for left hand layup. And then we also, also can switch that up and turn it to an off balance layup. We have our pro hop, big step. Finish on two, and from there you can work on, you know, fear, shot fake, step through, spin around, pivots, and all that other stuff. That's another video. Then we have our cross the paint finishes. We got one, two, but then we got four ways we can get into it. We can go pound, high catch, pound, low rip, pound, cover up, pound, high dribble to catch. And then we have our Kyrie series, where we show it, and then work on finishing around the basket. And we can do it over here as well, because you never know. I start off thinking I want to finish this way, only to come back and finish with the other hand. All right, sometimes just showing a little, showing the defender a little bit can freeze it. So if I pound it. Especially if I get hit hard, if I get hit, and if I can just gather a little bit and get that thing in my hand just right, now I just turn a play that could have been a really good defensive play, and I swung it back around and made it a good offensive play for our team. How would I do these drills? I would spend about, no matter who you are, about 10 to 15 minutes finishing around the basket. Just finishing around the basket, you might take a couple of these concepts and you may just go through all of them, or maybe you might hit each one five times, or maybe you might hit two and go, or maybe if you don't have a good left hand, you might find all the different drills in which you can uh, use your left hand and just do those. Do, just do those and just keep working on them until that left hand starts to feel like your right hand, right? Maybe you were playing in the game and there's a situation in which you didn't finish well. Start work, just work on that concept. Figure out if you can configure the chairs in some shape, form, or fashion that will allow you to, to mimic that game time situation. But these are all great opportunities, great drills, and really fundamental ways, uh, 
these are great ways to improve your fundamentals so that if you are a star player, if you are a role player, if you are a glue guy, whatever your role is on your team, when it comes to scoring around the basket, you know that you can convert and you have options. You're not just a one-trick pony where you can only go with your right hand and that's it. You can go off your right foot and somehow score with either your left hand or your right foot and still be highly effective. Hope this makes sense. Mark Fox Jr., more drills to come, done.